All right, so think back to Chem 101 again for oxidation states. Remember, for metals, it's just the charge of the metal. And the cool thing about transition metals is that they can have variable charges. Um, so they could be, you know, plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, all kinds of different stuff. And so if you think about the other metals, specifically group one and group two metals, that's different. Um, group ones are always plus one, group twos are always plus two, Transmission while transition uh, metals can have variable charge. So. Cool. So uh, to find out what oxidation state a transition metal kind of prefers or what it will be in a certain scenario, um, it's actually a really complex question. But one question that is relatively simple is what is the maximum oxidation state for a transition metal? And so here we say that the transition metal can lose all of its S electrons. And then after that, it can also lose all unpaired D electrons. So for example, if we take uh, scandium, right, it's our first transition metal. And if we think about its orbital diagram, it's going to end up being two electrons in the 4s, right? So 4s2 and then 3d1. So we can lose all both of these electrons and this unpaired electron. So scandium can have a maximum oxidation state of plus three. And then we can repeat for some other transition metals, let's take a look at manganese next. Manganese, super cool one. We have two electrons in the 4s, and then we have one, two, three, four, five electrons in the 3d. So one, two, three, four, five. And so you can see you can lose both of these, and all of these are unpaired. So it can lose up to seven electrons, and so it can have a plus seven oxidation state. Um, and so potassium permanganate is a very commonly used compound. And so that's an example of this highly oxidized manganese. Um, and you'll see an example of this in your quals in the labs. Next up, we kind of have, or just another example, we have cobalt over here. So it's going to be 4s2. And then cobalt has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons, or 7d electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now you can see we can lose, lose these two electrons and then these three unpaired electrons for a maximum oxidation state of plus five. Um, so it's not kind of a perfect trick. It actually doesn't work for copper. But it is kind of useful in kind of thinking, um, you know, what are the maximum oxidation states available? The other thing you have to remember is just because they can reach that high oxidation state doesn't mean they will. So here's a little picture in your book. It gives you this kind of first row of transition metals. And then it gives you their oxidation states. You can see the trend is, is relatively followed in terms of maximum allowed oxidation state, but you can see some are just less common than others. So for example, while iron can get up to plus six, most of the time it doesn't. Most of the time iron sticks with plus two or plus three. Um, so I don't expect you guys to memorize this chart or anything, just be aware that transition metals can have variable charges. Um, and, and that be able to know what the maximum allowed charge is. Um, you can see actually cobalt here, we did an example of they don't have it here. Other resources will tell you that they do have it. So it depends on kind of what you're reading. And again, the reason they can have all these variable oxidation states is because they have all these D electrons that they can either accept more D electrons or release some D electrons um, that are all approximately the same energy.